Good afternoon uh, to all uh, participants from the United Kingdom and the UAE and welcome to this meeting of the Emirates Society. Uh, my name is Alistair Burt, I'm the uh, chairman of the uh, Emirates Society, a friendship society between the Emirates and the United Kingdom uh, set up in 2018 by His Excellency, His Highness the Foreign Minister uh, and, uh, and ourselves. And uh, I'm looking forward to this opportunity today to talk about the work of the UAE UK Business Council. We have a, a, a very distinguished team and I will introduce colleagues as they uh, as they speak um, and give us a background. Uh, just a couple of technical things, if I may. The um, if you want to raise a question, please use the chat function which I think everyone has now become used to as I won't be able to see everyone. And the chat function is the ideal way in which to indicate that you uh, have a question to put. If we have time, we'll try and include those who want to ask a question to ask it personally. If time gets short, or if you want to indicate that you're happy for me to ask the question on your behalf, then please do so uh, in the chat. If you'd be good enough to be muted uh, while we have the conversation, that always helps the bandwidth. Uh, and uh, I hope that those technical remarks will help us all get through it. Um, this is a welcome opportunity to explore the work of the UK UAE Business Council, uh, which was set up in 2011 as part of the uh, government's Gulf Initiative. And I had the honour uh, alongside His Excellency Dr. Almar Gargash to inaugurate both the task force and the UK UAE Business Council. The council emphasizes the close relationship of the United Kingdom and the Emirates in commercial terms. As we know, the relationship goes much deeper between us and the Emirates Society celebrates that, uh, whether it's culture, whether it's in health, whether it's in education, with so many distinguished uh, Emiratis having the opportunity to, to study in the United Kingdom, not least, his Excellency, the Ambassador of the UAE to the UK, uh, Mansour Abuhul, who will be joining us uh, on today's call, for which we are most appreciative. Um, but that relationship is emphasised by the numbers of people who flow in both directions. There, there's some quarter of a million UK citizens who live in the, uh, in the UAE and the depth of the relationship over a whole variety of sectors. And today we're talking about the importance of that commercial relationship with distinguished members of the UK UAE Business Council. Um, uh, we'll be listening to the two co-chairs, uh, Lord Eddie Udney Lister uh, from the UK, His Excellency Ahmed Ali Al Sayer from the UAE. We'll be hearing about the administration um, of, the, uh, of the Business Council from Bradley Jones, the Executive Director, and Paul Sharkey, the Deputy Director. Uh, and then there'll be a further contribution uh, from Bada Al Alama, the co-chair of the Industry and Infrastructure Working Group. Uh, and I know at the end, the vote of thanks will be given by His Excellency, the Ambassador. So let us kick off, if we may, uh, and we're beginning with um, uh, the co-chair, the United Kingdom co-chair of the UAE UK Business Council, and that is Lord Eddie Udney Lister. Uh, and Lord Lister is well known to all of us in the United Kingdom, uh, a very distinguished public sector uh, and business uh, record, a close relationship with uh, the Prime Minister, uh, both in London and in Parliament, uh, recently Chief of Staff uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the Prime Minister and as Deputy Mayor for Policy and Planning in London. So, um, uh, Lord Udney Lister, if you'd be kind enough to unmute uh, and give us some opening remarks, we'd be very appreciative. Thank you very much, and thank you for giving me the opportunity of saying a few words on, on, on this call today. And um, I'm, I'm enormously grateful to the Emirates Society uh, for hosting what I think is a very timely webinar and, um, and for giving me the opportunity to set out how the UAE UK Business Council can add value to both the UK and the UAE governments in, in terms of delivering substantive change in our trade and investment relationships over what I think is going to become quite a crucial few months and couple of years as we get as we look forward. The primary focus for both of our countries is of course recovery from the pandemic and addressing the challenges of climate change. We have a shared interest in building a more, more resilient 
through diversification, investment in, in infrastructure, upskilling our workforces, and embracing new trade relationships. Um, all of those things are on the agenda. So let me go through those a little bit and give examples of how I think the UAE and the UK can work more closely together over the, the months and years ahead. The first thing is economic diversification. Um, we've all learned some terrible lessons from, from COVID. We've all learned that we've got to have a much more resilient supply chain in place. And of course, what uh, the, the number one area there, I think, is food security and agri-tech. Um, and these are going to become increasingly important area, areas. The UK has significant um, expertise in that area, um, technology-aided food production, vertical farming, uh, reducing food waste, making it all more productive. And um, the, this works well with the UAE's focus on developing an innovation-driven food security strategy and becoming a net food exporter to the wider MENA region. And that therefore creates lots of opportunities for, for Britain and the UAE to work together. And we as the Business Council will certainly be scaling up our work in the, that area. On infrastructure, um, I, I think um, all the UK uh, listeners will know about the Build Back Better policy of the Prime Minister. Um, the desire to um, increase economic production, particularly in the regions of Britain, um, working on advanced manufacturing technology, and, and that's going to underpin a lot of it. And I'm delighted that the UAE Business Council has been invited to host a UK UAE Day at the Global Manufacturing Industrial Summit in Dubai Expo in November uh, to bring British and Emirati leaders into these sectors together. In terms of developing new trading relationships, um, I think we've all been very awestruck by the significant commercial benefits that both the UAE and Israel have gained since signing the Abraham Accord last year. The UK is forging its new trading relationships around the world, and um, we have recently published our integrated review um, in the UK, which sets out the policy of a very much an eastward to tilt um, to policy. And I think there's enormous opportunities here in the UK and the UAE working together in partnership to win major new contracts in third countries. And that's again an area that the Business Council wants to um, put more effort into. We are, of course, um, in the 50th anniversary year, and um, that will be marked by a step change in the level of UAE's investment in the UK and Mubadala's announcement in March that the UK would become one of its strategic partnerships. An important announcement that also included a new fund which has been jointly set up um, between Mubadala and the UK government, uh, a one billion pound um, life sciences fund, uh, which 800 million came from the UAE and 200 million from the UK. I, I think it's just worth saying, this is almost the first time I believe that the British government has actually invested jointly in a fund like this with another country. I don't think it's going to be the last. I, I certainly believe it should be the first um, and that we should move forward on that. And I think that gives us a lots and lots of opportunity. The Business Council itself occupies a unique space in terms of bringing major initiatives to fruition. Our USP, if you like, is that we can harness the thought leadership of our member companies and working groups who range from large corporates to micro enterprises. And what they bring to the Business Council is their expertise, their specialist knowledge of the barriers that need to be addressed um, to facilitate, long, facilitate stronger business flows and commercial opportunities. And often these are still hidden from view and we need to um, expose them. The Business Council is also working particularly hard to reach out to the Northern Emirates and also to the UK's devolved administrations and English regions, all of which have strong opportunities for commercial engagement. His Excellency Ahmed Al Sayyid uh, and I act as a connector between Business Council members and governments re re representing our respective business communities at the annual joint ministerial joint economic committee. 
This enables us to ensure that market access and trade policy decisions taken by our governments genuinely reflect the concern and interest of businesses. And I believe this function of the Business Council will become increasingly important as our, our econ economies diversify further and the sectoral breadth of the UAE and UK companies trading with each other's increases. I would also add um, that there is a lot of work underway at the moment and consultation is shortly about to start on it, on a new trade arrangement um, into the Gulf, um, which will be a free trade agreement, which, which will eventually will also create lots of opportunities. That's a major piece of government work that's underway. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the Business Council. It's gone through a major restructuring and we have an entirely new team of staff and um, a very energetic team who have been in the Emirates and spent a lot of time there with members. They spend a lot of time with the British members as well. Um, so we've got this new team. I, I am very, very confident that between us, between ourselves and the Emiratis, we are going to be able to create lots of opportunities for both British firms, Emirati firms to do investments, to do deals, um, and, and to benefit both of our respective countries. So thank you very much um, for giving me the opportunity of saying a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lord Ebony Lister, for uh, setting us off as co-chair of the Business Council and uh, a, a wide ranging selection of topics indicating the breadth of the Business Council's work uh, and what it's doing, what it's doing anew. I'm sure that will spark some questions and I would encourage participants to use the chat function if they want to raise questions. Uh, it's now my great uh, pleasure and privilege to introduce the UAE co-chair of the UAE UK Business Council, His Excellency Ahmed Ali al uh, Minister of State. Uh, His Excellency currently serves as chairman of the Abu Dhabi Global Market. He's a board member of the Abu Dhabi Development Fund and Etihad Aviation Group. Uh, and on behalf of those who use your wonderful planes, thank you very much indeed. It's uh, their, uh, their great pleasure to fly. Um, His Excellency is also Deputy Chairman of Emirates Nature, uh, WWF in the UAE, and co-chair also, of course, of the UAE UK Business Council. Your Excellency, if you could have a few words about your perspective of the Council, we'd be very appreciative. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Alistair, and thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. I am uh, very grateful to the Emirates Society for hosting this webinar and for giving me the opportunity to brief your stakeholders in the UAE UK Business Council and the importance uh, of its role in strengthening the trade and investment relationship between our two countries. This is such a pivotal year for both countries, and it offers us an unprecedented opportunity for growing our trade and investment relationship. We have both taken great strides in addressing the COVID crisis by vaccinating our populations, and our economies are hopefully growing back. Uh, through the investments we've done in infrastructure, technology, and skills. For the UAE, our economic diversification is gathering pace. We aim to be a global hub for the industries and technologies of the future. Uh, our space program will build on the success of the Hope Crops arrival at Mars in February with the launch of a moon rover next year. Our national AI program will continue to commercialize AI capabilities across all sectors. And our investment in the agri-tech sector will boost food security and reduce the environmental footprint of food production, not just for the UAE, but for the wider region. We are also strengthening our capabilities as a manufacturing hub. We aim to double the contribution of our manufacturing sector to the economy to around 300 billion dirhams. Our aim is that much of this growth will be in advanced manufacturing. 
and we will continue to build on our strong reputation as a global hub for financial services and tech. Of course, the energy sector will continue to remain one of the key drivers of our economy. And like the UK, we are committed to driving forward the energy transition the hydrogen alliance established in Abu Dhabi earlier this year by Adnok, Mubadala, and Abu Dhabi Holding will not only build a substantial green hydrogen economy in the UAE, but will also make the country a major exporter of hydrogen. These are just some examples of how rapidly the UAE economy is ad adapting to face the challenges of the future. In my view, one of the key roles of the Business Council is to educate UK companies about this transformation so that they become aware of the scale of the entirely new commercial opportunities on offer in the UAE. Through its events and campaigns and through its working groups, I see the Business Council as a vehicle for bringing business leaders and entrepreneurs together and for fostering new collaborations that are rich in innovation and technology. Much of this innovation comes, of course, from SMEs, and I'm pleased that the Business Council has now introduced an affordable membership offer to SMEs to encourage more of them to become involved in our activities. Our respective governments are doing so much already to enhance our strong bilateral relationship. The Joint Economic Committee, which meets annually, reviews all of the barriers to doing business. And the Business Council plays a key role in identifying these barriers and in delivering on the committee's recommendations for addressing them. The Business Council therefore occupies, <coughs> excuse me, a unique space in bilateral trade relations. It represents the interests of both UAE and UK companies, supports the ambitions of both governments to deliver a real transformation in our commercial engagement, and is a forum for bringing thought leaders together and for developing new initiatives <clears throat> and partnerships. Amongst all of you, uh, you have to know I have made many friendships through this council, and I expect those friendships will grow and help <coughs> us in our mission. And I think that's the basis for what we are doing, the, the long lasting friendship between our two countries will continue. It is going through a revival at the moment, and I am very pleased and proud to be part of this uh, council, and I look forward to your support. Thank you very much again for your support and interest in the business council. Thank you. Your Excellency, thank you very much indeed. Um, I think it's been notable that both co-chairs drew attention to the sense of partnership in tackling this build back process. Uh, from the ravages uh, of COVID uh, and giving a very strong sense that neither the UAE or the UK is on its own in relation to this endeavour and the partnership between us will help us both and we'll be stronger uh, by the sum of our parts than we would otherwise have been on our own. Uh, and Your Excellency, your, your comments about wanting to educate people more about the opportunities available, well, please feel free to count the Emirates Society as a partner uh, in that process, we will always be here to uh, help host uh, uh, host things that will enable you to get that message over. So thank you very much for kicking us off, uh, as both co-chairs have. Um, to make sense of all these opportunities now, um, I'd like to turn to both Bradley Jones, the Executive Director, and also Paul Sharkey, the Deputy Director of the Business Council. Uh, Bradley first, I understand. Bradley uh, spent the first 10 years of his professional career as a teacher in Botswana, in Fujera, of course, and Singapore. Then a series of roles in the uh, what is now the FCDO, private secretary to five consecutive ministers, 
head of the UK India trade team and director of trade and investment at British embassies in Bangkok and Seoul and recently uh, spent three years on secondment to the royal household in the UK and two executive positions in two large corporates in the education sector in Dubai and supported the government of Jersey in its relationship and engagement with the UAE. So knows the UAE very well, knows the field very well. Uh, Bradley, what's your feel of the revamp of the Business Council that we've been hearing about and the opportunities available? Well, thanks very much, Alistair. That, that uh, summary of my career makes, makes me feel very old. Um, um, and for, thanks for hosting today's event. Uh, Alistair, you mentioned that you were with the Business Council right from the very beginning, 10 years ago, and you're still with us now for our 10th anniversary year. But in many ways, we, we feel like uh, we're quite a young organisation because we have gone through a major restructuring. And the driver of that restructuring was the fact that um, both the UAE and the UK are going through an economic transformation. And I think the Business Council has to reflect these changing dynam dynamics in the, uh, the work that it focuses on and prioritises. Um, You've already heard both of our co-chairs mention that primarily we are a thought leadership organisation. So we bring business leaders from both the UAE and UK together to discuss market access issues, trade policy issues, to identify emerging trends and op new opportunities for collaboration. Um, the opportunities that uh, Lord Adney Lister referred to as those opportunities that are still hidden from view but which will become very prominent over the years ahead. Um, as part of our restructuring, we have expanded our membership. Traditionally, we consisted of large corporates on, uh, in both countries, but we, uh, we're very much encouraging SMEs to join the Business Council because they bring with them a lot of innovative ideas and thought leadership of their own. And uh, we are also inviting uh, not-for-profit organizations such as academic institutions uh, to join the Business Council as well. So, because I think the uh, more diversification of viewpoints that we get, the better for us in terms of um, identifying new ways of collaborating. Um, we work very closely, of course, uh, with both governments. Uh, we've had great support from uh, His Excellency Mansour Abelholm and his team at the UAE Embassy in London. We work closely in partnership with Simon Penny and the DIT team at the British Embassies in Abu Dhabi and Dubai the Ministry of Economy in the UAE, and many other uh, government uh, agencies in, in, in both uh, countries. But our key um, mandate is to provide additionality to what is being achieved at a government to government level. And in that sense, we're the voice of the business community in both markets. Uh, Paul and I run a joint secretariat, equally representing both sides of the equation. Uh, in the spirit of the times, we're a virtual organization, we don't have an office. We try and spend as much time in the UAE as we can, as well as in the UK. And um, as both our co-chairs alluded to, uh, in addition to broadening our membership to SMEs, we have a particular mandate that we wish to represent all seven Emirates amongst our membership. And I'm pleased to say that we've had uh, great participation from some of the smaller Northern Emirates so far. And uh, we're also very much connected to the three devolved administrations of the United Kingdom, uh, all of whom are members of the Business Council and the English regions. Uh, I mentioned a little bit about additionality. Uh, so what we do as an organization is we try and feed into the government to government dialogue that takes place, which is known as the Ministerial Joint Economic Committee. So that meets once a year. They issue a whole list of recommendations and observations about how we can enhance the bilateral trade and investment relationship. And we try and uh, support the delivery of those recommendations through our five working groups. So at the moment we have a working group on industry and infrastructure. And one of those co-chairs, uh, Bada Al Alama, will be uh, speaking in a little while. We have uh, working groups on innovation, on energy and sustainable growth, on education, culture and skills, and on healthcare. And the focus of these working groups is to try and achieve real and meaningful deliverables within a specified time frame that are aligned with some of the recommendations of the Joint Economic Committee. So just to give you a few uh, examples uh, at random that these working groups are delivering at the moment, um, the education working group is looking at quality assurance and exchange of views on that. 
obviously the energy working group are very much focused on how the UK and the UAE can collaborate more on renewable energy, uh, particularly the hydrogen, which is uh, an area of much interest at the moment. The healthcare working group is focusing on digital healthcare and we'll be meeting tomorrow, in fact, to look at how we can uh, deliver a virtual round table on digital healthcare at the um, Arab Health uh, Trade Show, which is taking place in June. And in our innovation working group, we have very active subgroups uh, working on AI and FinTech, amongst other things. I'll leave Bada in a little while to talk about what we're doing on the industry working group. Uh, so that's an overview, really. Um, we're, we're also going to be, uh, well, we're evolving into an organization that is uh, really delivering high value events and scaling up in terms of our communications through our website and other social media channels. And I'd like to hand over to my uh, deputy director, uh, Paul Sharkey, who, like me, is uh, ex-DIT. Uh, we worked together briefly at the British Embassy in Seoul. And Paul will update you on our programme of events coming up over the course of the next few months and on our website and our other communication channels that we are operating. So over to you, Paul. That's great. Thank you, Brad. And can I just say to everyone, it's an absolute pleasure uh, to be joining this session today. So a very good afternoon and good evening to everyone uh, on the call today. Uh, so yes, on our events, uh, first and foremost, I just want to point out that, you know, as we've mentioned, due to the bilateral nature of our organization, each and every event that we do should be of relevance to both our UAE members and stakeholders, as well as our UK ones. Uh, we therefore aim to have a roughly balanced number of UAE and UK participants and where possible representation from SMEs uh, as well as large corporations. To date, our events have unfortunately only been online and this has, as we all know, uh, been a situation that, that we could not have avoided. Uh, we have, however, I think, made the best of a less than desirable situation by simply putting together some really good content rich events. Uh, and to give you all a couple of examples, um, this year we have put together some webinars, as Brad said, with our working groups, uh, the first of which came from our industry and infrastructure working group in January, uh, where a high level panel of speakers came together to discuss new opportunities for collaboration between the UAE and the UK in the infrastructure sector. And this has really helped shape the priorities and future direction of the working group, uh, which the group's co-chair, uh, Bader, uh, we'll talk about uh, momentarily. And the, the second event this year uh, took place in March. Uh, this was an equally stimulating and insightful discussion uh, put together with our education, skills and culture working group uh, on how UAE and UK practitioners can work together to create a more positive mindset among young people towards technical and vocational training. So when it comes to events like this one, in order to maximize our audience, uh, we have so far chosen to broadcast events live on our YouTube channel, uh, which you can find easily by searching our name. And the full recordings are posted there, uh, as well as on our new website, uh, which I'll also come to in a minute. Uh, and this allows people to watch, um, you know, if they can't make the event, they can watch it in their own time, which we've really helped uh, we, we've seen help boosts uh, our viewing numbers. Um, we're also currently um, not charging for our events, uh, and nor do we require attendees to register at this stage. However, in the future, we might develop some, you know, Chatham House style events, which will be invitation uh, or registration only as, as things progress. Uh, but more importantly, we we hope to soon transition to in-person physical events, which there's certainly a demand for. Um, to, give, to give everyone a sneak uh, peek into our forward look, um, we are looking forward to um, uh, hosting uh, some other events this year. Um, and I think there'll be more, but this, this is a snapshot. Uh, so first off, we've got, a, we've got a virtual round table on digital healthcare, uh, as, as Brad mentioned, and smart hospitals which we will run to coincide with Arab Health in June. 
And as Brad mentioned, we have a meeting with our healthcare working group tomorrow to discuss uh, the initial planning stages. Um, our innovation working group are also planning an event uh, in the summer to showcase the opportunities for collaboration in AI. And of course, for the rest of this year, our energy working group will be building on its work related to renewables and the race to net zero in the run up to COP26. Um, of course, I have to mention Dubai Expo. We are planning to run uh, a series of events uh, throughout the six months uh, with, as we've also mentioned, uh, the most significant being our UK UAE Day on November 25th at uh, GMIS, which is the Global Manufacturing Industrialization Summit. Uh, and this is going to take place at the uh, Dubai Exhibition Center on, on the grounds of the Expo site itself. Uh, lastly, and most importantly, we also have our high level uh, plenaries taking place twice each year. Um, the last two, of course, have been virtual. We're hoping that from now on, they will also be physical events. Um, the next one is now being planned to take place in London uh, in July to coincide uh, with the UAE Day. And we also hope that probably the next one will be um, at the UK Pavilion at Dubai Expo uh, this coming November. And of course, this will be time to take place just before the UK UAE Ministerial Joint Economic Committee, uh, which we also feed into. Uh, so that's, that's it for me on, on our events, uh, but I do have a couple of other points to make. So uh, for those of you who uh, may be familiar uh, with our old structure, um, we've revamped everything and that includes our website. So same URL address, uh, www.uaeukbc.org. Uh, we have a lovely new website uh, and aesthetics aside, we've really designed this to be a member driven platform. So we do encourage members and partners uh, to upload their content. In addition to the profiles, we'll have pages specifically for any white papers, thought pieces that you may have. So please do consider that for the future. And uh, just as a side note, we're also planning uh, to add some micro sites related to our working groups because they are really taking shape. So we feel that they need a bit more space to breathe within our website. So they're also uh, now in consideration. And finally, on our social media, we are really only present on uh, and LinkedIn, Twitter, and, and, and that's quite deliberate in our actions. Uh, we, we find a lot of success there and we do encourage members to let us know if we can work with you on your social media strategy um, uh, to get your message out there. So that's everything for me today. Thank you. Uh, Paul and Bradley, thank you very much indeed. I mean, thank you for uh, the object lesson in, uh, as you say, how to make the very best of uh, difficult circumstances that we've uh, been experiencing both in the UAE and the UK over the last year or so, uh, and how you've used that to revamp the Business Council and to look hard at what it's doing. Uh, a nice selection of, of events, which again, I hope the Emirates Society will be able to help advertise uh, for you. Um, nice to be reminded of Arab uh, Arab health. Uh, I enjoyed my uh, my visits to that. It's uh, it's a fantastic uh, exhibition, uh, and I I was so pleased when I was there to see so many companies of different sizes uh, from the UK being represented, from the largest to I think a very small outfit from next door to my original constituency in the northwest of England. So clearly messages have got through about the opportunities uh, in. The, the region because Arab health isn't just about the UAE, it is about the opportunity and uh, as His Excellency said earlier, the gateway, the hub that the UAE represents uh, for all our business opportunities and everything else. So Bradley and Paul, thank you very much indeed for, for your contribution and uh, there may be an opportunity with some of the questions to contribute further. Um, please keep the questions coming in, there's a nice selection come in now which I'll go to uh, in a moment. But first, uh, as has been mentioned, we're also very delighted to be joined by uh, Bada Al Alama, the Executive Director of the UAE Clusters Unit uh, within Mubadala's UAE Investments Platform. And for those unaware, M uh, Mudabala is a $232 billion uh, um, business uh, over six continents uh, in multiple sectors. Uh, and uh, Bada is the chairman of both Strata uh, manufacturing business and Sanad. He serves as board director at Mubadala Health at Yasat, a satellite business, 
uh, Umalat uh, Security uh, Printing, uh, and also a joint venture with, with Daimler. Uh, he's chair of the UAE UK Business Council Industry and Infrastructure Working Group. Baba, you're enormously welcome um, uh, to join us today. Uh, look forward to what you have to say about the work of the Business Council uh, and what you are engaged upon yourself. Thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you for having me, Alistair. And uh, and I uh, let, let me say, first of all, start off by telling everyone Ramadan Kareem, even though we are halfway through the holy month of Ramadan, it, a good cup of coffee before a webinar would do quite a lot <laughs> if, we, if we could have that good cup of coffee. But let me say I'm very grateful for you to invite me and to participate at this webinar and to share some thoughts about the UAE UK Business Council and how it could essentially enhance the bilateral relationship and how there are so many substantial growth opportunities between our respective nations. But let, let me also repeat something I, I said in the very beginning to you, Alistair. The relationship that we do have with our counterparts in the UK is not one that is based on a, a business nature or a business transaction. It is one that we feel that the UK is a second home to a lot of Emiratis. And we feel very much at home and, and we do miss our travels to the UK as a result of the lockdown. And we do hope that very soon these measures will be lifted so that we could actually come and enjoy some scones and some afternoon tea in London uh, when things open up again. So by way of introduction, as you mentioned, I am the executive director at Mubadla overseeing the UAE clusters. And the UAE clusters is pretty much my responsibility in developing, incubating, and growing ecosystems, which we have done so far on the aerospace side, and we've done it in the healthcare side, and we've done it in the ICT side. And we obviously have a responsibility to do some new sort of economic activities in country so that we could develop the country for the future. Alongside that, I also have the pleasure, as you rightly said, of serving as a co-chair of the Industry and Infrastructure Working Group alongside Jan Ward, the CEO of Coracom uh, International. Speaking about the Business Council, I mean, I feel extremely passionate about how business councils work in partnership with government and private sector stakeholders. They obviously play a vital role and a unique role to boost bilateral trade. Since my involvement in the UAE UK Business Council, I'd like to sort of quantify some of the more sort of, let me say, big measures that have been taken place. Senate Group, our services, industrial services champion in the UAE, has established a strong $7 billion partnership with Rolls Royce. Mubadala has developed an internship and on the job training program with BA Systems. The Mohammed bin Rashid Initiative for Global Prosperity has established a partnership with Cambridge University to recognize novel and notable contributions by corporates in the CS CSR space. When you take that into context and you think about the UAE, the UAE is becoming an increasingly diversified and skill-based economy, investing heavily in technology and innovation. More recently, I'd like to point out that the Ministry of Industry and Advanced Technology launched or announced the Operation 300 billion dirham strategy. And what that means is that our contribution from the manufacturing sector in the UAE, which stands at 133 billion dirhams today, our intention is to grow it by approximately two and a half times in the next 10 years, which serves as an opportunity for not just UK businesses, but also UAE businesses that are looking for good partners as we would find in the UK. The ministry also launched the Make in the Emirates campaign, and the Make in and the Emirates campaign offers an opportunity for UK companies to establish a local presence to be able not to serve just the UAE, but to serve the wider region. As you also probably know through the Emirates Society that DP World and Abu Dhabi Ports Company have a very, very well-established presence across the region. These initiatives are some amongst many that are driving the UAE to become one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Taking this into consideration, the Industry and Infrastructure Working Group will aim to attract PPP investment and identify attractive opportunities to invest in various infrastructure classes in the UK, as well as facilitate some strategic partnerships between the UAE and the UK side. I know of a lot of different companies that are excited to actually set foot in the UK market, and they're looking for partners in the UK as much as the UK companies are looking for potential partners in the UAE. And more importantly, we wanna develop the new dynamic sectors such as energy transition and life sciences. 
We heard about Sir Ed Lister speaking about the importance of COP26 and the importance of sustainable practices. Energy transition is playing a big role. And we also heard from His Excellency Ahmed Sayyid uh, regarding the Hydrogen Alliance and the importance of you know, developing the hydrogen economy in the UAE to be able to export green hydrogen to various parts of the world. So far as a working group, We've had a few successes, and I'd like to bring that to everybody's attention as well. We brought together senior practitioners across the spectrum, from the UAE, from industry, from you know, various government entities across both the UAE and the UK. We've identified concrete opportunities, and I like to say that the concrete opportunities were not limited to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. They included opportunities in Sharjah, and they included opportunities in Fujairah. We're also planning, as uh, Sir Ed Lister was kind enough to mention, Lord, sorry, I apologize, Lord Ed Lister was kind enough to mention the UK UAE Day at GEMIS, the Global Manufacturing and Industrialization Summit, which is happening on November 25, and the focus will be primarily on technology and innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, what I have shared are some of the many things accomplished by the UK UAE Business Council and my respective members that are also co-chairs of other working groups. What I mentioned was just a fraction of what has been accomplished. And all of that was done notwithstandingly the challenges brought upon us as a result of COVID. Going forward, our joint leadership for greater innovation, greater adoption of sustainable practices will drive us all towards a prosperous future. So we should work together to scale up our engagements, accelerate growth and deliver value for both of our great nations. Let me thank you, Alistair, for actually organizing this on behalf of the Business Council, my two respective co-chairs, our two respective ambassadors, Bradley, Paul. I genuinely hope to have the opportunity to actually meet the members of the Emirates Society in the UK very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed, uh, uh, Bala. Uh, and again, just the the sheer energy that's going into this at the moment is very noticeable from all our speakers uh, and what you've had to say about your, your recent successes and what you're doing is, is, is very encouraging indeed. Thank you very much for, uh, for all this. Uh, we do have a, a series of questions now uh, and I uh, might start in, in, in view of time just by, uh, by reading the, the first one, if I may. Um, Abdullah Jazem, who is the founder and president of Emirates Trade and Investment. And thank you very much, Abdullah, for joining us uh, this, this afternoon. We really uh, appreciate that. A good friend of the society. But you have a very focused question. Does the council, does the society encourage Emirati entrepreneurs and startups in the UK? Uh, and what does it do to help them grow and succeed? Uh, so it's about the uh, entrepreneur side of this uh, and what the Business Council can do in relation to those. Now, I've got an array of people who might want to answer the question. I can see you all. Uh, if somebody would like to wave as to who would like to take that one on uh, to answer Abdullah Jassim, I'd be very pleased. Uh, Bradley, to kick off. Uh, to kick off with one or two ideas. Um, we, uh, we have an innovation working group which is chaired by um, Najla Al Midfa, who runs the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Centre uh, in Sharjah, and is co-chaired by Kevin Cunnington, who was the UK's digital envoy. And one of their key priorities for the months ahead is to encourage closer collaboration between uh, startup tech entrepreneurs in both the UAE and the UK. So we're at the very beginning of developing some exciting plans for fostering uh, closer collaboration uh, between tech startups in both countries. Hopefully uh, we can do something around London Tech Week, which is starting in September. And of course the Sharjah Enterprise Festival later in the year and Dubai Expo. So that's just one example of where we've really harnessed the energy of our working group co-chairs to stimulate that collaboration between Emirati entrepreneurs and, and UK entrepreneurs. And I think that's something that we would like to focus on much, much more uh, going forwards. Thank you. Uh, thanks. I don't know if anyone else would like to comment on that, uh, uh, on the work with entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm looking if anybody else wants to come in. Uh, not on that one. So let me go to a slightly tricky one from um, uh, uh, 
Sir Harold Walker, who's a, a, a former uh, ambassador, uh, and uh, Hookie Walker says, uh, what do speakers on either side see as the main obstacles to increased trade? We've worked on the basis that life has been hard, but things are getting better and we're very optimistic, but life isn't always like that. If there are gonna be rocks in the road, what might they be? Um, uh, again, uh, I, I wonder if either of the co-chairs would like to sort of have a, have a go at that uh, or bada. Um, what's coming along that we should be aware of that we may need to navigate if things don't turn out quite uh, as we would like. Bada, yeah, I see you reaching for your, for your microphone. Well, well, the reality of the situation that I've seen, at least globally, there's been this inward focus of domesticating and localizing activities at the expense of international trade. So the fear of losing jobs, the fear of being replaced by machines, the fear of being replaced by technology has created more of an inward focus towards the economy of being self-reliant and less dependent on other countries and other activities. I do think that that plays a role, but it is in many ways, many ways, especially with the big corporates uh, overlooked when you consider that the potential as was highlighted earlier in this conversation about partnering up to access new markets. The real opportunity is not to just focus on, you know, what opportunities exist for UA companies in the UK market or vice versa. The real opportunity is for us to partner up and try to identify new markets where UK capabilities, maybe UAE business development capabilities, combine efforts and fund new opportunities elsewhere. And I think when you think about the entire world as being a huge, gigantic opportunity for business, yeah, we can find a hundred different reasons why things won't work. Having a good partner, being able to be transparent and communic communicating openly is one way in moving in the right direction. And, and I can tell you, I mean, there were many reasons why aerospace, let me speak specifically about aerospace wasn't working, but just think about the $7 billion deal that Senate signed with Rolls-Royce. There were a hundred reasons why they shouldn't have done it or couldn't have done it or wouldn't have done it. But in reality, when you have a big market and you have a credible partner, in the UAE, you know, business sense will always, always preside over emotional, let me say, um, concerns. And, and I do think there are many more opportunities like that coming up. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much. The questions have been coming in quite thick and fast now. Uh, and I want to move to one from, uh, from Jim White. Uh, again, great friend of the society, Jim. Thanks a lot. Uh, many years ago, I worked in the UAE and helped the industrialization process. I noticed that UAE education and training focused on operational skills. While important, there was a deficit of business development skills, which is so essential for startups. How can this gray area between education and industry be assisted by the Business Council? Bradley, your microphone's yeah. off, so I'm going yeah. to seize upon you. Yeah. Um, that's a really, really interesting question. Um, we have focused over the last few months on uh, opportunities for closer collaboration on vocational and technical skills. But, uh, but I think Jeremy's right. There's, um, there's real opportunities for growth in UK and UAE providers and practitioners in business development skills to work more closely together. So I think that's something that our education, culture and skills working group will look at going forwards. Uh, and perhaps, Jeremy, uh, after this uh, webinar, perhaps we can connect with each other and uh, we can discuss that in greater detail. But I think, you know, this is, this is something that's going to be increasingly important for the UAE as it diversifies its economy and moves up the skills value chain and so on. Um, those BD skills will be increasingly important. So let's connect after the webinar and have a further discussion uh, about that. Uh, thanks, Bradley. Uh, Basha Simon, uh, again, another great friend of ours, uh, has uh, another... Oh, sorry, can please. I just comment on both questions. Yes, I indeed, think. Your Excellency. Our two countries have very little barriers to entry for their goods and services. Bradley, you know, you, you can confirm this. Uh, your Excellency, uh, our ambassador, can confirm this. T tariffs, overall tariffs to the UAE are very low. People think, you know, around, it's not around 5%, it's really the effective rates are a lot less. And really we need 
only to think of the opportunities. For example, in education, let me tell you my own personal experience. We've had, uh, I work very closely the ADGM Academy with the London Institute of Banking. And through a very simple agreement, we, were, we have reached now hundreds of people who are now certified to, uh, as in, in banking uh, key competencies through this program of, uh, we're doing with the uh, IDF. So I think I'm, I'm on the UK, UAE, the only real barrier is I think uh, the lack of commitment to communicate and to reach out and to be, uh, to bring these opportunities to uh, entrepreneurs and in both countries. But governments, both governments have always wanted uh, this to happen. And of course, we've seen increase in, uh, in our trade uh, relationship over the years. But I'm just conscious uh, of how many more we can do. And I'm really, uh, I, I, I call on our council members, in particular the group uh, on education and innovation, to seize this, again, time, the time is really important. This year, we will see more emphasis on the strategic relationship and anything is possible. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much. And again, emphasize your, your point about getting the message out there, which is a key part, both of the Business Council and indeed the Emirates Society. Thank you uh, very much, Your Excellency, for that. Um, the, the next question I was going to go on to, and I think we now have enough questions uh, because we'll slightly run over the hour and if people are good enough to stay on, then we can uh, complete the questions before the vote of thanks from His Excellency the Ambassador. Uh, but our friend Basha Bernard S uh, Simon uh, wanted to ask, uh, thank you for these excellent presentations. The Business Council is a much needed catalyst. The strategic bilateral interest in secondments and apprenticeships in all sectors is potentially a key area of cooperation. Are there any schemes being looked into to encourage and operationalize, uh, operationalize this area? Uh, so secondments and apprenticeships between the UK and the UAE, getting uh, people physically to move around for these opportunities. Um, are there any ideas about that? Is that working in any place in particular? Uh, again, I'm looking at members of the council to see if anyone's got some examples to, to think of or whether or not this is an area where you'd like to see something developed. Uh, giving perhaps younger people the chance to work in each other's countries and to train in each other's countries with all the reciprocal benefits that that can bring. It's a, it's a great idea. I think I see, um, <laughs> I think I see the co-chair, Lord yeah, uh, Udni yeah, Lister coming in. Yeah, yes, can, Eddie, can I come please. in? Because I, I think this is a really good um, question, a really good suggestion. I think it's got a lot of um, a, a lot to commend it. Uh, no, it isn't something that we've got involved in as a business um, uh, council. Um, I think it is something that's worth looking at. I think there is enormous advantages, um, both at government level and in commercial uh, in commercial companies, for people to be shared and to have an opportunity to work for um, to work in a different environment and to learn more about um, the country that they're, they're in. So I think it's something that we could certainly um, think about and certainly worth talking about. And um, I, uh, I'm sure something that we'll, myself, my co-chair can have a chat about in due course. Thank you very much indeed. It's, uh, it's great to come up uh, with an idea which we know can be worked on and will provide yet another new opportunity. Uh, a, a final question now, it's, it's quite a wide ranging one, but there might be uh, one or two particular answers to it from uh, Jeremy Williams. Um, and he just wanted to ask this. Um, uh, he says his cross-cultural book, Don't They Know It's Friday, first published in 1998, revised many times, is being revised to create its fourth edition, and we'll all be rushing out to buy that. Thank you for, uh, for the advertisement. No harm in that at all. Uh, and he asks, what one or two things would you say have changed COVID apart in the UAE GCC Western business world in the last year or so? Uh, a very petty example, he says, is the fact still in widespread Gulf use? 
uh, maybe that's changing as a very straightforward technical issue. Uh, and the Abraham Accords were mentioned earlier, but if panelists wanted to think of, of any one positive thing that had happened in the last year, maybe it's a way of learning to work with advers uh, adversity like COVID. Um, what's the biggest thing that people would like to mention in terms of change in the Gulf UK, Gulf Europe, uh, Western relationship in the last year or so? It's required everyone to put their thinking caps on, Jer uh, Jeremy, but I can see people doing so. My, my own sense has been that people have realised they don't have to work in the same place as they used to work. I mean, the nature of work has changed dramatically as people have responded to the physical restrictions of COVID, but we've found a way around it. We've found a way to do things differently. Um, Co-chair uh, Lord Ernie Lister has uh, uh, op uh, offered a chance to speak. Yeah, th thank you. Um, I think the biggest change um, is, 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 is as a result of Brexit. I, and I'm not, t I'm not getting into the Brexit argument, but the fact is that British companies have now started to realise that, um, you know, the paperwork involved in exporting, the work of actually going out to sell their products. Um, and we've been very used to just selling into Europe. We'd forgotten about the wider world. Um, and I think it's now people are beginning to realise there is a wider world out there. There are opportunities out there. Um, it's not that much harder to go to other parts of the world to do their sales. And the great advantage the UAE has for British companies, of course, is that um, people speak English, um, which is not always true in Europe. Um, so, I mean, there's lots, lots of benefits. Um, and I think people are now waking up to that. And I think it'll take a while, but I think people are now widening their, their, their horizons. And the second one I think that's changed dramatically is, is the, 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 the brilliant work that Mubadal has done, um, the way in which um, the UAE is investing in the UK, the, the way in which the UAE has set out very clearly what its priorities are um, and where the opportunities are for British companies to work and, and to find Emirati partners um, to develop those opportunities further. So I think, I think everybody has laid their store out now. Um, I think everybody could see the opportunities, and I hope they are starting to see the opportunities. So I think it's, it all feels pretty good. And I, I did mention in my few words that there is also the work going on um, to create an FTA into, into the Gulf. Um, and that again, will just give further emphasis towards that. And everybody thinks about the FTA as just being about tariffs. And as um, my co-chair quite rightly said, Tariffs are not the issue in the UAE. They've never been the issue in the UAE. Um, but there will be opportunities with an FTA to start looking at qualifications, to start looking at um, the paperwork flows. Look at some of these things, which are, um, which are where the barriers lie, if there are barriers. Uh, and I think that's where the opportunities occur. And I think those opportunities occur both ways, by the way. I, I think there's great opportunities um, for the for the Emirates as well in the UK in that area. So I think I think these are the areas we should put, you know, start thinking about. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, is there a chance for a closing word from uh, from the UAE uh, in relation to uh, what we've uh, what we've learned? I'm looking to either Bada or His Excellency if you wish to add anything to what the co-chair has said. Uh, Mansour, yes, Your Excellency, thank you. I'm asking Mansour to respond. Yeah, I, I tell, thank you so much uh, for referring the question, Your Excellency. Um, and I, I would echo uh, Lord Lister's comments, and certainly I think, uh, and yours as well, in terms of uh, fostering uh, deeper trade in, in, in the context of the, the FTA, uh, which we look upon with, with great sort of ambition and excitement. So I think it's not just the, the tariffs, but it's the non tariff barriers uh, and, and those other elements around it that we need to keep focused on. But um, no, I think, uh, you know, I echo the, the words of the co-chairs in terms of the relationship being poised uh, at a point where we can really take it to new heights and really in the context uh, of navigating through the post-COVID uh, recovery, you know, I think uh, we stand in good, good stead, uh, particularly um, off the back of the Crown Prince's visit at the, in December last year um, uh, where he met with the Prime Minister and, of course, uh, the, developed this partnership for the future. So this is a very exciting time, I think, for the trade and investment relationship uh, as we move forward. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. And before I call you for a formal vote of thanks, uh, if I may, uh, just to say a, a very warm thank you to all the participants uh, and all our panellists. Uh, as far as the Emirates Society has been concerned, this has been a very, very good opportunity to build and establish the relationship with you. You can be sure of us as friends going forward um, and we'll do as much as we can to publicize each other's events. Uh, but I, I, I think the basis of the friendship and relationship that has been referred to by so many participants on the call is at the heart of it. Um, and I know from my own experience, um, Lord Lister, the uh, it, it conveying to businesses and firms in the UK that they've got to try the waters they try the waters and get out there, they'll find the sort of reception that they would, they would really want, but they've got, to, they've got to do it and be out there. And I'm quite sure the Business Council echoes that and the opportunities are, are there. Now, it's my very great pleasure to introduce for the vote of thanks, um, uh, the ambassador of the UAE to the UK, uh, His Excellency Mansour Abahul. And thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, sir. And we look forward to your vote of thanks. Thank you so much, Alistair. Do, do, I do apologise to, to everyone. I was having slight technical issues just logging on. I, I tend to be, I have a lot of technical issues, but that's, that's my life. Um, so uh, I'm very, very privileged. It falls upon me uh, to thank everyone really for taking part in, in today's session, which was hugely uh, insightful and productive. We had some superb contributions from uh, His Excellency Ahmed Asayev, Lord Lister, uh, Bedr al Bradley and Paul. So very grateful for those, for those contributions. And of course, the wonderful um, chair we have for the Emirates Society uh, in, in Alistair Burt, uh, who brings, uh, is, is a brilliant moderator, brings great expertise and knowledge to the relationship given his background. Um, and I just want to thank all the speakers today really for providing us with a glimpse of the vital work uh, the UAE UK Business Council does. It was most valuable to hear from His Excellency Ahmed Asayel about the extraordinary work um, that's being made to, to diversify the UAE's economy. Uh, and th many thanks to Lord Lister uh, for taking us through the many areas the Council is doing some critical work in, which dovetails very nicely with UAE priorities, particularly in the areas of food innovation, food security, uh, infrastructure and advanced manufacturing. Bradley and Paul gave us a very useful overview of the brilliant work they're doing, um, organizing events, revamping the Business Council and expanding its reach across both the UAE uh, and UK. And it was very interesting hearing from Bedr uh, in terms of the recent success um, of, the, of the industry uh, and infrastructure working group uh, and the up and coming GMS summit. Um, and of course, the, the excellent questions that came, came in from our members, as always, uh, hugely stimulating and, and dynamic questions, which uh, I enjoyed listening to. Uh, and I, I know the members would have been hugely impressed to know how active the council is since its relaunch. Uh, and as our co-chairs uh, set out so well, um, this year stands as a transformational year in terms of our trade and investment relationship. And it's heartening to see, really see that we have excellent people, people working so hard to promote uh, trade and investment by breaking barriers to business and seizing new opportunities for Emirati and British businesses. Um, and of course, the vital working groups that are examining everything, everything from healthcare to energy, from education to fourth industrial revolution, and from culture to infrastructure. All of this, of course, translates into events, promotion deals, and as Bradley put, thought leadership uh, and, and that means more jobs and prosperity and more investment for both our countries. So I really see, as uh, the UA ambassador to Court of St. James, really see the council's vital work uh, in terms of how we um, move through into a post-COVID recovery and more widely for the economic relationship uh, to, have, to benefit from the, an established institution in the shape and form of the business council, which serves as a a uh, forum for government, business leaders, and a key platform to foster deeper trade ties. So many thanks indeed for everything you are doing and for taking the time uh, to speak to us today. 
Um, Your Excellency, thank you very much indeed. Uh, and it just falls to me to thank uh, our hosts for, for technically putting it together, for Eve and Hector, uh, for making sure the, uh, the tech has been, uh, been effective, uh, and to thank everyone as His Excellency has done, and to wish everyone well for the rest of the day. Thank you very much indeed.